Hey everybody, Brian and Rachel Goulet here of GouletPens.com, and we just got back from the Atlanta Pen Show of 2016. It's our first time that we'd ever been. We've been to DC several times, mm -hmm. but we really just wanted to share with you what our experience was like. So part of the reason we went initially was to be able to meet up and do interviews with mm -hmm. some of these people that we don't get to see very often. The who's who of the fountain pen community, That's right. if you will. That's right. People like Brad Dowdy from The Pen Addict, um, Karis Customs was going to be there, mm -hmm. Dan Bishop, we'd been talking with him about uh, you know, doing an interview as a Goulet guest, you know, mm -hmm. so kind of rolling on the guest thing that we'd started out doing in yeah, early 2016. Rather than doing it over Skype, we're like, well, if we can do it in person, that's way better. And then it turns out, because we were going, Kara Benz, Boho Berry, uh, mm -hmm. decided that she was going to come as well, so it really kind of ended up turning into a nice, friendly event. So it started out, we went on Friday. We woke up at, what, 4.15 in the morning way so that we early. could get ready and catch so our flight. Early. Um, it was a three-day event, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we woke up early Friday, flew down, and we had a couple of interviews lined up. So we got there, kind of got oriented at the show. Scoped out the show. Yeah, met up with the show promoter, Jimmy, ahead of time, which he was fantastic. Like, Atlanta is pretty well put together. He hooked us up with a hospitality suite so we'd have a quiet place to do our videos, which was so appreciated. Yeah, so the first couple of hours there, we were meeting people, kind of getting the lay of the land. We'd never been to the show, so we didn't know what to expect. So our first interview was with Anna Reinert from the Well Pointed Desk, and it was really good. She was a good sport. She doesn't do a lot of video, and she was kind of a, our guinea pig because she was the first one. We were in a new location. We don't do a lot of like off Goulet premises shooting. So she was really great, and we're excited to get her video out. And then after her, pretty much immediately, we had Dan Bishop from Kara's Customs. It was a trip. Yeah, he's a very strong personality, and I think that'll be a pretty entertaining one. So we're, a lot of fun. We're really pleased with how both of those turned out. After the interviews, there was a cookout for everyone who was at the pen show. So yes. it's really cool. It was a hotel-sponsored cookout, but it was really nice. Like the fanciest bowl of mayonnaise I'd ever experienced. There was like serving like dishes <laughs> and stuff that everything was on. I was like eating barbecue burgers and stuff like that on like a serving dish. It was it interesting. Was, it was really nice. So we, we sat down with a bunch of, of folks and then we played pens for a while, which is what you do after hours at the pen show. Yep. So getting out my Monteverdi, you know, 36 pen case and just playing pens. And we tested out Facebook Live, which is a relatively new thing. It was a little buggy, so we didn't stick around too long on it. Um, but then really we were just hanging out with good pen people after that. And we were kind of hanging around the bar because we were going to be meeting up with Mike Masayama, famous nib Mikester from MikeAtWork.com. And he uh, was running a little bit late, so we met up with him around 8.30 and uh, got like a solid hour and a half nib training with him on how to, really tune, awesome. how to tune nibs, kind of some nib fundamentals, how to adjust flow, um, how to fix baby's bottom and things like that. So that was just like really intense, really good uh, nib knowledge that we were able to get from him. He's a really nice guy, really good teacher too. So he's gonna Absolutely. be a great resource. So we're, we're really appreciative of his help. Yeah, and then after that, there was still a ton of people down at the bar area, probably like 50 or 60 people I would mm -hmm. say. So we were just hung around and we were just messing around with pens and talking and just getting to network and talk to people. Until it was really the early cool. day caught up with us and I was like, I need yeah. to go to bed. <laughs> it was what, around 11 or so, 11.15. Yeah, and we were like, all right, we've been up for a long time. <laughs> So then we went to bed. And then Saturday we woke up and it was just like pen show morning. So we just wanted yep. to be at the show that's the busiest morning. So we wanted to make sure we were around. And I actually spent a lot of time with Andy Lambrow, who mm -hmm. is a uh, guy who wrote a couple of books actually, Fountain Pens of Japan and Fountain Pens of the World. And this is like, a no this joke added so much kind of book. To our, our luggage coming it back. did, yeah. We had to pay <laughs> overage charges on our luggage because of how much these things weigh. But it's an incredible resource. We're going to be carrying Namiki here pretty soon. So mm -hmm. having really solid like pen history information was really good for us to have and get to spend time with somebody who just knows that much about the pen world. It was really kind of neat. Um, and then you and Jenny were going around and shooting yeah, video. Yeah, shooting video. I was talking to Diplomat, um, the distributor. So, you know, exploring new pen brands, catching up with Biscani and some of our current brands. And then also talking with customers and just people who were attending the show. Absolutely. Um, as well as some of the other dealers. So it was really great to get that face-to-face -face time with everybody. It was. And then right around lunchtime, we left the premises, grabbed some food, and went downtown to PlannerCon. PlannerCon. Which just so happened, a completely separate event, but just so happened to be planned on the same day within about the 20 minute drive from the Atlanta Pen Show. So this is essentially a similar kind of show but for planner people. So it was a really interesting experience. Got to meet up with Vicki Pirelli, Miss Vicki B from YouTube. Kara Benz was there mm -hmm. hosting a bullet journaling workshop and we, we got, got to meet great... up with, sorry go ahead. Yeah we met a lot of uh, the great who's who of the planner community. So we got a really good breakdown of like I thought all 
planner people were kind of the same, but there's different subcategories of planner people and different Absolutely. types of planners and different reasons people use their planners. And it was so helpful for us to see the community and understand that as we prepare to launch file effects this summer, as Absolutely. well as the, the Midori Traveler's Notebook, which we already have. Mm -hmm. So it was really good insight, really good to meet people, some who have used fountain pens, some who don't, and seeing what that world is like. Yes. It's and very interesting. So we were there for about two and a half hours, and then we went back to the pen show. So at that point, Rachel and Jenny took a little break because that planner show Introverted, was needed, a bit much. Introverted, needed our, our me time, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> and so they took a break. I went and hung out with some more pen folks, uh, which was really cool, just trying to get as much time at the show as possible. Then we had the Pen Addict 200th episode live podcast. Yes. So they were recording video as well as having a live audience. It was standing room only. There were so many people in there, but we were lucky enough to get in. We were standing. Stand. We were standing stand in the standing room. Yep. But it was a lot of fun. Um, really cool to see the interaction and uh, be a part of it. Yeah. So that one was a very kind of emotional time for them. So it was neat to do that. Then there was the after party, the uh, Ken Rose sponsored, you know, Monograppo Mule party. A lot of booze floating around because pen people like to party a of, after the show. A lot of social lubricant for social all of us lubricant. introverted pen folks. So they had it up in like a suite and then it migrated down to the bar. Well, it started down by the ballroom. Started by the bar, went to a suite, we, came back to the bar. We hadn't eaten dinner at that point, so we were starving. So we went to the restaurant. We missed most of the part by the ballroom. Then it went up to the hotel, the hospitality suite where we shot the video. And then it went back down to the bar. And people so were up very late. We were very late. Rachel Plain finished pens, up. Yeah, drinkings. Rachel finished up around 11 <laughs> and I was there till about 1.15 in the morning and people were still going. So it was a lot of fun, really just getting to spend time with some good people. Good people. Then we woke up early on Sunday at around 6.45 or so, so we could meet Bre uh, Brad Dowdy for breakfast. breakfast so that we could then head over with him to the Knock headquarters, which is about 15, 20 minutes away from the show. Met up with Jeff over there. Yep, Jeff Bruckwicky, him and Brad uh, do Knock together, so we got to see their facility and do an interview on site at their place with them, which was really cool. Both really cool guys, kind of got to see some of the ins and outs of how Knock works. Mad appreciation for what they're doing Talking there. Talking future plans, all that good stuff. Absolutely. Then I uh, came back to the show, hung out for a while. Brian sp spent a lot of time with master penman Michael Soule. Yes. Um, who is the mentor to Jake Weedman, who Brian's... Uh, I have admittedly a big, have a man crush on, <laughs> yes. <laughs> big fan so. Of his work. so he spent like about 20-some minutes drawing or 22 writing, minutes actually writing, drawing i don't even know the correct word. writing he was doing, doing this amazing this piece. flourished spencerian script yes so um and i recorded the whole thing on video so i'm sure we'll do something with that and it turns out he also has a variety of materials as well he's got a couple of dvds that he does for learning handwriting especially spencerian he's got this little handbook he's got this huge book on american cursive handwriting and then he has Work another and then he has another um you know spencerian script practice set so i bought all the things uh so that i could come back with them it's not just spencerian <laughs> but learning the history of handwriting which mm -hmm. is just so key in in our yeah. fountain pen world and i even bought he had a um he does his own wood turning too so he has uh these offset nib holders that was pretty cool so i bought one of those as well so that just i could kind of start to practice doing it. So I'm a complete novice and this is going to take me forever to read all this stuff. But I thought while I was there, and he actually knew who I was, and so that was kind of neat cool. too. So it was great to get to sit next to a legend, really, uh, like Michael Saul. And then after that, I uh, caused us to be late uh, to Mike Hurley's interview. Mike is uh, the, uh, other the, the other the half of the Pen Addict. And uh, he has, does, runs Relay FM, so he has a variety of other podcasts, professional podcaster. He came over from the UK for the show, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, and he was super flexible. We ended up not being able to get back into the hospitality suite because it had already been checked out. So we had to improvise as far as our shooting location. So we were like, uh, uh, how about by the pool? So then we went out by the pool and we're all setting up and everything. And then it was around noon or shortly after the sun was coming over the building and the sun was like creeping up on us as we were interviewing. We we're like, crap, crap, crap. So we scooted over and then it, it was moving even faster. So we we're like, shoot, we have to move to the other side of the thing because we wouldn't needed to be in the shade. He was a professional. It was great. And yeah. I, I think that interview is going to turn out really well. A very, very kindred spirit. So. It is, but you'll never know the drama that went on behind the scenes just to, just to sit down and do well, that and then interview. like we had a fixed time because we had to catch our flight home so that that concluded the show and so now we're back so it was, it was literally and, uh, like yeah. wrapping up with mike and it was like okay we gotta go okay bye bye everybody we're gonna shake hands real quick bye we gotta go start playing and then we we're out of there so it was like to the minute it was things were planned and uh more so than we normally plan especially me ever plan anything in our lives but 
you know, kind of recapping a summary of the whole show, I gotta say, like, we thought it was gonna be great. It turned out to be even better than we thought it would be. It was much smaller than DC, but that allowed it to be more intimate. So we had um, much more meaningful conversations with, with people. And that yeah. was really, really nice to have. If I had to equate it to anything, I would say it was like a family reunion without the drama. You know what I mean? Like, it was mm. literally, it's like you knew these people, you just don't get to see them as often as you like. Everyone was a kindred spirit. Yeah. We're all different people, but it just felt so unifying. Even, like, the vintage people who had been going to the show for 20 years had new people with pink hair and stuff like that that were walking wow. around <laughs> and all getting to hang out. And it was, like, so much camaraderie, so much just, uh, everybody just loving pens together. It was really, really cool to be a part of that. So the show was a huge success for us. We really had a blast. Glad we Got went. to meet great people. Looking yeah. forward to D.C. Absolutely. So hopefully we can repl replicate something similar in D.C., but uh, we had a great time, and I'm glad we got to show you at least a little bit of what it was like in Atlanta. So thanks so much for watching, and right on.